today we're going to go target some green butter fishing. Uh, King George Morning, I reckon. We're pretty much on the money. They've been really good over the last few months, both here, Ballowing Peninsula, St. Leonard's, Altona, Western Port. Dean tells us Western Port's been fine with King George Whiting. We've got a couple of good areas around Mud Island. We're going to go there, but first, we're going to get some baits now. We're going to use squid, caught just now. We've got, you've got your baited, we've got pippies, um, we've got white bait and pilchards. They actually do like pilchards, King George Whiting, so it should be an interesting day. <laughs> Two, three, go. We're off. The first thing we do, of course, like always, is we get our squid. And it didn't take long. We've got our first bit of bait for our whining today. And the good thing about it is if you don't actually catch any whining, that happens before, you can actually use these guys as tucker. They are fantastic eating. And he's just on. Bit of a tip, if you hold them there, they shouldn't squirt you. As soon as you touch their body, they'll let loose. Yeah, he's hooked all right, I reckon. Looking good. Really good when you're fishing for squid when you're using the right outfit. Got this from CSC. Al and Tony down there. Caravan and boating. Anything you need, they've got it there. Now this guy is hooked to what we call on the crown. I'm going to show you him closely. He shouldn't squirt. And Lewis, if you can get right in and show the folks there. That's where that's hooked there we call it the crown. Usually usually when they're hooked on there they don't come off it's only when they're on the tips of the tentacles is when you can lose them but when you've got them like that you've got yourself a nice squid looking pretty good now another tip i'm going to actually put this guy out of his misery pretty quick we're actually going to strangle him he'll change color soon he'll go white and there you go Job done. Without doubt, one of the best, if not the best, King George White whiting bait we have. Gummy shark snapper, of course, we know they love them. We'll keep going. Arrived at our King George whiting spot, and I've got to say that was pretty quick. If it is a King George whiting, it feels like it. Sometimes the big flathead can, I oh know, it feels like a whiting. We've got a lot of current at the moment, we've got a flood tide. We'll talk about that later. Look at the bend in that rod, mate. That is just awesome, isn't it? Eh? Alright. Here it comes. You just gotta love it when a plan comes together. Now that was in the water, not even a minute. And I'll show you what we use for bait in a sec. I just wanted to see if I get some fish in the area and it's answered our questions. We're not moving from here, Lewis. We're going to stay here. That was pretty quick, wasn't it, mate? Yeah. All right. He's just Let's fish. on the side there. And I'm just going to pop it out. Push it out. These new hooks are sensational these days. Look at that. Now for new people, these are the ones that I recommend. We're going to go over the hooks a little bit later too. But aren't they a fantastic looking fish? I'm using this rag because if I didn't have this rag, he's got a lot of slime on him, he would just go zoom past Lewis's shoulder there and we'd lose our fish. We're on the board. Well, that's what I caught the fish on. The candle, the actual candle of the whiting, and they just love them. They're soft as. They're a little bit tricky to put on, particularly when you're using circle hooks or close enough to circle hooks 
but like everything in fishing it's extremely important to have your barb out just like that right. I'll give it another one actually because they are very very quick with the baits You know what? Bugger this. Lewis is laughing, but I'll tell you what, I'm having the last laugh. That's actually fantastic. Raw squid, yeah. You can't get fresher than that. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose I'll put one on the hook for the, for the whiting. Lewis is going to taste it soon. Isn't that right? Yeah? <laughs> Alright. Alright. As you can see, I really lobbied that. I threw it right out. Sometimes they can really spook. We're only in four to six metres of the water in this area. Let it go out. It's a fair bit of current at the moment. I actually strip it a little bit. I wait till I feel... And you've got to have braid for this. Wait till I feel the donk the donk of the actual sinker yeah and I just sort of walk it back a bit walk it back a bit and hopefully we'll get a hit well we just snuck in to have some lunch and the rod went off and I quickly grabbed it and it is a King George Whiting. Have a look at that. He's a beauty. Notice the red beads there? I do believe they work. And it is starting to rain. That's alright, still catfish. Long shank hook this one. Fantastic long shank hook. There you go. He hooked himself. I didn't do it. I don't think Lewis do it. Did, did, did you have the rod in head? No, no, no. All right. Let's go have a lunch, mate. <laughs> this thing's a freight train. I don't know what it's... I don't think it's a whiting, of course, but... It's probably a... A banjo shark, and you do get all the other unwanted species. It's all part of fishing, it really is. And just don't lose your patience. If you want to bust it off, you can. But I don't want to wreck my leader. It just shows you what you can do with, with small gear. I got this from Al. CSC. He knows he's stuffed, that's for sure. I think we're going to be we're going to be here for a while. Might just uh, we might just cut for a commercial break. Lewis and I can go and finish our pasta for lunch. We'll come back after the break. See you then. Hello, I'm Bill Malonis from Navico Australia, Territory Manager for Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. Um, today we're going to be showing you about the NSS uh, EVO 2 9 inch screen uh, that we've got on Charlie's boat and we'll go through some features, functions and all that information that we need to go through. Chart plotter, um, press pages again, you've got to press your chart plotter, in we go. So what we've got now is the chart plotter. You can actually see where the vessel is, which is just off Portsea at the moment, where we are. Um, we're anchored up. So at any stage, we can move around with the screen. Um, if we wanted to go to a waypoint, highlight that particular mark, go to waypoint and go to, and it'll give us a straight track on how to get to that waypoint. So it's like a... Um, 
like a highway mode basically you've just got to follow the red line the most important thing that you've got to remember is that you've got to make sure that you haven't got anything in front of you like a marker boy or something like that because it is as the crow flies so do make sure that you've got your your wits about you basically so um other than that it's a matter of just going through let's get rid of the navigation side of it um on the actual chart screen itself it's a pinch screen so if i wanted to actually know what that marker post is and it says it's number one i can go into the menu go down to where it says info and then it's a lateral mark and then all the information comes up on that lateral mark itself um, if i wanted to show where it is it's just there on the screen so um, other, other points of interest um, what i've also got here is that you've got your markers if i clear the cursor for the time being go into menu chart options and at the moment where the orientation is looking ahead a lot of people like it with north up uh, but it is personal preference i prefer to have it as i'm either driving or which is course up or my heading up but that's personal preference to you other side of it yes you've got a 3d viewing so you're looking basically over the top of you at a 3d view and you can see where you are compared to where it is on the screen One of the good things about these pods on the 795, you can get right out there into the action. And the walk through there, what the guys that did for me on Real Appeal, just basically just comes across like that, what's in there. Um, better focus on what I'm doing here. I might snap him off because I'm going to get a bit more give. Rather than locking up the drag, you just basically just finger on the reel. And then lift up this guy does not want to come up and with a winding stick winding gear it means he hasn't broken my line already yeah, banjo as we said pretty big fella he shows you what you can do with just a little outfit and if you look at that that's why he didn't bust off or break off the line was pretty safe it's just a hook that's there I'm not sure where we'll get that. We'll have a little look. Come on, mate. Done. Mr. Banjo, these things are in plague proportion at the moment. Well, pretty much all year, but particularly now, February, March, when the water's really warm, there's not much you can do. You just got to fish for them. Simple as that. All right, let's throw him back. Off you go, fella. So the fish are gone a little bit quiet now. And that, if that happens, don't be frightened. They're not gone away anywhere. They're, they're still here. They're just not feeding. And what happens is when your current gets to a certain speed, usually on the peninsula of the fish, and it's not just King George Whiting, all fish do this. They just stop feeding for a while. Then what happens is the current will start to slow down. The, the end of it, in this case we've got a flood tide the end of the flood tide then they'll start now we're going to do our prep work there's no point doing it when the fish are biting so i'm just cutting up this squid that we caught as you can see into little strips it's all ready to go there when the fish start biting nothing worse than not having any bait ready when they start going off and you hear that all the time the fish are going off that means that they're just feeding that time that i told you about so we've got some squid there, of course the good old gotcha, pippies, a few of those, these are nice size, and we'll get out some pilchards etc and hopefully the fish will come on. Now what we're going to do now too is we're going to get our burley ready and that's what I'm going to do now. All right. Burley. Now, there's a lot of different ways to burley. The most important thing for me is to get the burley down to the seafloor. There's no point putting it up on a sack and just letting it drift away. Put it down on the seafloor. That way the fish will smell it and come to your baits. 
Now, the gotcha guys, again, have got different pots. This one is a small one. Okay, so that's for your whiting. You can get a larger one for your snapper, etc., or your gummy sharks. And what we're going to do, we've got your gotcha aniseed burley pellets. I love them. Something about aniseed. You just tip them in there. Just like that. And, of course, you've got to have your blanket. In this case, the towel. It's on half for now. All right. Now, I've just connected it to a rope. I've got around... 25 meters of rope on this thing because the bay is only 22 23 meters it's the deepest that's all you need and that's it let's put it over We've talked about the banks along here. This is basically around Mud Island. There's a lot of different banks. To show you exactly what they look like, we're gonna send out Roger, our drone. You can check it out. You know, it is starting to rain a bit. Not too much though. Thank you very much, off you go. King George Whiting are often found in bays and protected waterways over sand and seagrass, also venturing out into the continental shelf during adulthood. As you can see, as Roger goes higher, you can see on the left hand side of the screen the shallow water. This is around 2 metres dropping into 3 to 4 to eventually 6 metres and this is where the King George Whiting feed. There are a lot of areas in Port Phillip Bay where you can catch King George Whiting such as Altona, Werribee, Portsea and also down on the rip. Let's go have a look at Port Phillip Heads. Ah, the rip, the gateway to Port Phillip Bay. This is Queenscliff. As you can see by the grass beds, there are a lot of areas where you can catch King George Whiting. The entrance to Queenscliff Harbour and Swan Bay, another fantastic area for King George Whiting. This is Port Arlington. A lot of King George Whiting are caught from this area as well. And a lot of people fish here for them, including a lot of Maltese. Hey, Kifinti! That's Jay Furness trying to catch a King George Whiting at Queenscliff and Port Nepean. Let's go see how he's doing. All right, mate, I think we've finally got the one we want. We've been plagued by uh, wrasse and blue throat and some other reef species, but look at that. That is what we want. Oh, that's what we came for. We've been plagued by uh, a few reef species down here, blue throat wrasse, uh, other forms of wrasse and parrotfish, but that is what we want. Now look at the thickness of that guys, that's a true Port Phillip Bay whiting. Now on the cuttlefish as well, which is definitely my number one bait for, for whiting. And let's just have a quick go on the measuring stick. It's just over 46 centimetres, lovely, that's what we've come for guys, absolutely fantastic. Tell you what, only takes one of them for dinner and you're full. Well, bait's back in the water, let's get another one. 
40,000 years ago, Point Nepean was actually the place that the Aboriginals came, or the wives and the, the, the women came, to give birth to the children. I wonder what they were fishing for 40,000 years ago. I actually live on the back beach and you've got the millions there, which you can see all the shellfish that were they collected, where they harvested and where they sat and ate in the families. It's pretty, uh, pretty amazing stuff. I think one day me and Charlie will take you out in the back beach and we'll show you a bit of that. Anyway guys, these whiting are a little bit slow at the moment, but we are on a bit of a slack tide. About another 15-20 minutes we should get a little bit of run, and as they say, a bit of run, a bit of fun. Stay tuned. We made a move because we were just getting hammered by the crazy banjo sharks straight away again. And that's the thing, you've got to just keep moving until you find the fish. Oh, King George Whiting. That one was on Pippi, Cocktail and Squid. There's no doubt. Turn all down, mate. Well, there you go. Now, we showed you the footage from above with Roger the drone. Now, we're going to get in the water and show you the environment that the King George Whiting live in. Hopefully, there'll be some fish under the boat. And before we do, check this out. This is my hook'em pole supplied to me by Mick. The good thing about it, it's a gaff and it's also a net. But, check this out. It's actually a holder for your GoPro. How good is that? And there's more. I actually use it for my dive flag supplied to me by the boys at the Underwater Products. Simply goes in there like that. And there is your dive flag. What a pole. So you've got your net, your gaff, your flag and your GoPro all in one. Good idea Mick. Now here's a close look at the gutter. As I said before, you can see it's around 2 metres dropping into 4 metres, then eventually into 6 metres. And this is the area that the King George Whiting feed. Let's have a close look. Yes, you can see the grass beds. Ah, the anchor's working well. Good one, Saka. Thanks, Rex. Now that's why my bait's been going. Leather jackets. There is thousands of them. Time to get home and have a rest. King George Whiting forms a very big basic of Australian fishing. From commercial and also recreational, it is worth to the commercial industry around 5 million Australian dollars per year. Well there you go, that's the end of our day on the Mornington Peninsula catching King George Whiting. As you can see, those leather jackets were pretty thick stealing our pippy and our squid rotten mongrels that's the way it goes i hope you enjoyed the show we'll see you next time on another savage seas adventures bye for now